80 kilometers southwest of Genoa, in the province of Savona, high up in the mountains, amidst acres of vineyards and olive trees, nestles the beautiful little village of Arnasco. Luciano Galizia and his family run a small cooperative here. I'm excited about experiencing a different way of life, of living Liguria through their eyes. The hustle and bustle of Genoa seems like a world away. I am surrounded by raw, wild nature, the home of olives and wine. We've just taken a short drive into the countryside surrounding Arnasco. Remember, we're mere kilometers away from the coastline and from Genoa. And it's absolutely lush. It's green, the vegetation is varied, and I think it really does display the very best of the Mediterranean. Liguria exemplifies what the Mediterranean should be. It's got the sea, the coast, spectacular coastline and beaches, and this magnificent green, green countryside. I can really feel Liguria working its magic. Benvenuto, benvenuto nel forte di Arnasco. Eh? It's beautiful. <laughs> Questo era un forte. Molto, molto bello. Eh, molto bello. Bellissimo. Un, un forte militare che dominava sulla piana di Albenga. Right, so these are the ruins that we've seen here, military fortress. Molto of course, bello. it's a strategic high point. So from here, it could um, see well, a large part of Liguria. Sì. This is absolutely spectacular. And what you can't appreciate at home is the smell. The natural perfume of the countryside. Herbs, plants, it's absolutely powerful and, and takes over your senses. And something else which I really have to mention. We are surrounded by butterflies. I hadn't seen this amount of butterflies in years, especially not in our part of the world. Grazie Luciano. Prego. Natural Questo, lavender. Una, una volta facevano il profumo con questa, con questa lavanda qua. Eh? Wow. È molto profumata, anche perché questa non è lavanda domestica, ma è lavanda selvatica. Yes. Quella proprio, col, cioè, che nasce spontaneamente. Of course, nasce. wild, yeah, eh. wild lavender. Looks quite different to the lavender that, that people grow and cultivate in their gardens. The smell is absolutely beautiful. We're not used to either to this lush Mediterranean. The, med the, the countryside that we see in Spain, especially down south, is very dry. Um, but to see the Mediterranean at its best, I feel very privileged. I'd, I'd never experienced it before. So thank you very much. Grazie a voi. But something unique to Liguria and unique to this cooperative is the way that the, the, the olive trees are, are, are seeded and the, the way they are set over the land. They're set over terraces. As you can see, we're surrounded by hills, uh, beautiful, beautiful hills and valleys. So there isn't any flat land. So the olive trees, as the same as with the vineyards in this area, are all set on terraces. So this building is original. Original. And original. The, all the building, all the stone, the woodwork, and everything we see in it, all the utensils for, for olive press, the, the stone wheel, um, the wooden scythes and instruments used to, to cultivate the land. Everything in here is original. Eh, una volta si macinava soltanto 100 kg di olive, adesso se ne possono macinare 400 tutto assieme. La diversità okay. è questo. Il prodotto è rimasto ancora come un tempo. So the cooperative are now using modern day methods 
and these methods could press about 80 kilos of, of olives and what they're using now can press 400 kilos of olives. Prego. For the pesto. Per fare il pesto, anche yeah. perché così ha il sapore già del, del gusto del pinolo, quello che è uno degli ingredienti più importanti per fare il pesto. Right, ok, so this Arnasca olive, which was um, specific to the area, to Liguria, only found in Liguria and produced by the cooperative um, that we were talking about earlier, um, has a, an aftertaste of pine nut. So therefore, it makes it perfect for pesto. Luciano. Sì. Now get, we get to the good bit, the Adesso tasting. passiamo alla degustazione dell'olio, all'assaggio, così sentiamo le caratteristiche organolettiche di questo prodotto che ne abbiamo parlato, sia dalle piante, poi il frantoio, eccetera. Ok, ok. We're going to see whether I can taste the, the characteristic flavors found in the Annasco olive. I was going to say grape there for a minute, but no, olive. Never done an, an, an olive oil tasting before. I've tasted lots of oil, but not like this. So, We heat it up. Okay. Yes. You've got to heat the, the oil up in your hand so it warms a little bit, although it's a pretty hot day, so I don't think it'll need too much. Poi passiamo a, a controllare il colore, eh? il colore giallo. Okay. It's yellow. Yellow. It's golden yellow, but it's... Sì. Okay. And very clear, you can see right through it. Poi passiamo a sentire il profumo dell'olio. profumo intenso ancora dell'olivo, yeah. de, un leggero fruttato che ha mantenuto le caratteristiche ancora nel tempo. It's a perfumed flavor and even though it's intense, it's perhaps not as intense as, as what we're used to in Spain. Ok, adesso passiamo alla degustazione. Prendiamo una piccola parte di olio e la spingiamo nel palato. Guarda come faccio io, eh? Aspetta. Ok, he's going to... Ok. Prego. <laughs> ok, I'm going to attempt. It's really complex actually. It's a, a lot of flavors. There's um there's a heat, an instant heat which envelops your mouth. It's um very intense yet very smooth um, richness sweet at the same time e ha un leggero astringente del carciofo I could just keep on drinking it, it's crazy, but I could drink this. You can just imagine this olive oil, you know what, you don't need any food, you just need a bowl of olive oil and a great big chunk of bread and some salt and just dip the bread in the olive oil with a nice glass of wine. Salute! Salute! <laughs> <laughs> Un saluto all'arnasca! Eh? Salute all'arnasca! <laughs> Grazie! You can see Luciano and the cooperative also have their vineyards and in these vineyards they produce three types of wine, two whites and a red. It is the Pigato which is unique to the area. Luciano will explain a bit more. These you can find the grapes, uh, one in, in the rest of Italy and another one you can find in the Mediterranean. Luciano, what makes the Pigato so special? Sì, la, la specialità del pigato che viene coltivato soltanto in questa zona, nell'Albenganese, ed è un po' un vino unico, un vino secco, principalmente secco, e poi dopo ecco, ha tutte le caratteristiche del territorio ligure, di questi microclima particolari, e ha un sapore di mandorla, eh? un leggero sapore di mandorla. This wine is specific to the Ligurian area and, and in particular this area, the Pigato. Its characteristics are its taste. It's got a very, very unique taste. It's a combination and a combination of the Mediterranean um, countryside and the sea. The saltiness of the sea can be found in the earth and it lends this um, white wine 
uh, golden in colour, an almond taste. It's a dry, bitter almond taste. Let's e try it. Passiamo all'assaggio allora adesso. Yes. Eh? Grazie. Vedi il colore giallo paglierino, yeah, il colore pale. tipico del, di questo vino. Yeah. Senti già quando lo agiti il profumo che viene dal, dal bicchiere, è un profumo molto intenso. Yeah, it is an intense perfume actually. It, um, it smells sweet. I don't know whether it will be sweet, but the smell is dolce. Sì? The smell, sì. the taste maybe not. È un, un, sì, è un leggero dolce, ma un, è un dolce fruttato. Yes, eh? okay? fruity. It's very smooth. Sì, si sente molto intenso. Eh? Yep. Yeah. And slightly sweet and unbelievably, because I was finding it hard to imagine that I would taste the almond in the white wine, but you can. Veramente, it's definitely there, you can dopo, taste the Dopo l'assaggio dell'olio ci voleva un po' di vino, no? <laughs> <laughs> yes, after the oil, this is very welcome. This is welcome. I can, this I can drink as much as you want. Certo, certo. The oil was, was um, harder going. I like it, Luciano. A lot. Luciano and his family's commitment to producing wine and oil of the highest caliber is admirable. For romanticism aside, this is a difficult and demanding way of life, yet the rewards are apparent. They are a loving and united family, living very much at one with the land. In the mid-16th century, Genoa's wealthy merchants wished to live in homes befitting their status. The old town was cramped and busy, so along the northern fringe, houses were pulled down to make way for the Strada Nuova. Matteo, what an incredible view! Yeah, really, this is, this is the point of one of the best points of view in, uh, in Genoa, over the Palazzo Rosso. Which it's is, spectacular! Uh, Really, really, really nice. Really, this is uh, uh, Via Garibaldi, which is one of the main streets uh, here in Genoa. It's called also the streets of the museum because it's long uh, these streets, so you are only museum. Ancient building uh, became museum. This is Palazzo Bianco, Palazzo Rosso. Only one palace, only one building at the beginning of uh, the streets is by, uh, the owner is a private uh, family. The other one are, are only, are all of uh, the city hall uh, or property. But um, I'm assuming um, Palazzo Bianco Palazzo because Bianco. it's white. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because the... All the was built in the white style uh, from Carrara. So Carrara, Carrara marble. Yeah. So is it all marble? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they were they were wealthy, but um, they invested and in art, and they I suppose they encouraged the movement yeah, of, yeah, of artists uh, and sculptors they, at the time. They rent the artist because for the family, for the the, the rich, more rich is the family. More is uh, the paintings inside the palace. Uh, okay. All the all the things are most beautiful than the others. So it's uh, like a battle between family. Yes. Now this is a 16th and 17th century Venetian artist. Yeah. And it's uh, made. Sorry, it's from the Principe Odone di Savoia. The owner was. Uh, the, uh, the, the Prince of Savoia, the Italian Prince. The painting I have been looking forward to seeing the most. And I think you've got to admit, there's some beautiful, impressive artwork here. Yeah. But the masterpiece is without a doubt uh, Caravaggio's painting. Yeah, really. And it just stands out, doesn't it, out of all of them? 
it's one of the most important uh, painter in, and the, the painting is also it's one of the best one because you see the light and then the name is Eche Homo. And, uh, well, what does that mean? Eche Homo is the, the big man, the man, uh, the, we, have, we see Jesus uh, with the represent the they're man. They're mocking him. Yeah. The, so it, they're mocking him, aren't they? Yeah. So uh, it's... Uh, here is, the, and, and that's what he's saying, oh, of course. Here is, here is the big man, look at, yeah. look at, look so, at, yeah, the son of... The God. man. This is incredible. It's room after room of spectacular works of art and in incredible rooms. We've just walked... Oh, look! And we can no. sit <laughs> and have a... I, like, I didn't realise it. I thought that we, I was going to lean on it and admire, but you no, can no. actually sit. You can sit and uh, have a moment, a relaxed moment, an art a relaxed moment. And looking at uh, the painters in totally relaxed uh, with your life. I like it. Which is the way of life. This is uh, once again doing it in style. Relaxed. The palazzos have certainly allowed me an insight into how the wealthy Genoese used to live. But now, I wish to see how they live nowadays. And for that, one must visit Portofino. Welcome to the fabulous and magnificent Portofino. I'd heard so much about this place. It really is one of the must places to go and see in Italy, in the world quite possibly. And it certainly has lived up to its expectation. It's absolutely beautiful. Perfect for bigato and romance. Valentina, ciao. How are you? Fine, and you? Very well, thank you. Very excited to be here in Portofino. Do you like it? I love it. I don't, love doesn't even begin to describe. It's so beautiful. Yes. Thank you for meeting me. Um, Valentina is a biologist at the Portofino Marine Park. Um, they look after, they conserve the coastal areas. Valentina, I really don't want to leave this place. I want to stay here. I do. I want, to, want, I want to, to sit on that little terrace and live here for a few weeks in the summer <laughs> with my with my pigato wine. Do you think that's possible? Can you arrange it? <laughs> um, but I know we, we need to go. So so where would you recommend? Where do you think we should go? Uh, if you want, we can uh, go to see um, an old uh, way of uh, fishing uh, called the Tonarella of Camoli. That, uh, that, are, that is really typical of uh, this place. Yes. It's, it's, it's the, the last uh, small tuna trap in Mediterranean Sea. But before, if you want, we can, uh, we can go to San Fruttuoso Bay. Oh. Can I is, have a swim there? Yes. One of the three houses of Dolce Gabbana. Wow. <laughs> this tower? Yes. It's beautiful because it's a traditional, it's a yeah. medieval tower, isn't it? Yeah. And he's yes. converted it. Yes. And he's got his own little private entrance yes, into the sea and the boat, of course. Mm -hmm. Right, private if I was boat. Dolce Gabbana, I would choose to live here too. The entire coastline between Genoa and Cinque Terre is protected. Strict fishing regulations are enforced and this is allowing the marine life to thrive. Yet there also exist strict codes of practice for pleasure boats and water sports. This is essential, for the spectacular coastal villages are popular and unsurprisingly attract great numbers of holidaymakers. Valentina, this is one of the surveillance points you were talking about before for the dolphins. Yes, this is one of uh, our uh, boys. It uh, was placed uh, in 2012 for a um, life project called uh, Arion that is uh, coordinated by the University of Genoa because uh, as MPA usually we carry on a, a strong uh, collaboration activity uh, with the university. And uh, these boys are uh, equipped uh, with four hydrophones in order to to listen to uh, the sounds of dolphins that are uh, in, this, uh, in this area. 
uh, because uh, here uh, we have uh, a, a strong population of bottlenose dolphin, more or less uh, 300 uh, dolphins uh, that uh, moves from uh, from Genoa to Cinque Terre and used this uh, this zone of uh, Portofino Promontory um, as a heating zone and uh, sometimes also reproduction zone. These two boys are uh, the limits of the MPA. Oh, okay. This is the the canal of entering of the of San Fruttuoso Bay. And uh, today the San Fruttuoso Abbey is managed by five uh, environmental uh, funds, uh, um, it, uh, Italian environmental funds, um, that usually manage the, the Abbey and uh, periodically organize uh, different uh, um, different uh, shows and uh, exhibit. Uh, so it's a, culture, different, like a uh, cultural centre. Yeah, yes. And can, pe can people come here and stay? I mean, they can come here and have their, their lunch or their dinner? Yeah, yes, a can lot people of people here? Uh, come here every, every day, especially during the weekend, to, to have a swim. Uh. And swim is exactly what we decide to do. For there's something rather special lying in the depths of the waters here. The Christ of the Abyss. A massive bronze statue of Jesus Christ has been lowered onto the seabed to honour the memory of divers who have lost their lives at sea. But I must admit, as I swam towards it, it filled me with dread. I did not find his presence reassuring. Instead, I felt he was calling me his arms outstretched, welcoming me down to the murky depths. Quite frankly, I couldn't get out fast enough. Well, we've hijacked one of the fishermen's boats. <laughs> um, but this is an, a very intriguing setup. I've never seen this before. So they, they, they berth one of the boats here. Yeah. And then we've got the nets on either side. And they are all working in that boat. I've never seen this before. What, what exactly is happening? Yes, this is a, a particular uh, and a typical way of fishing, uh, typical of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, this is the last uh, tuna trap, small tuna trap uh, of the Mediterranean Sea, locally called uh, Tonarella. Tonarella. Tonarella is a, a static tra trap device used to catch uh, not bluefin tuna, but uh, other pelagic species. But what are they doing? They're pulling the nets, so they've laid the nets. Yes, they uh, usually the fishermen leave the, the nets at the, at the bottom, like a curtain. Okay. Um, and uh, raise the net three times a, a, a three times every uh, three, three times a day. A day. Yes. Okay. Do they catch fish each time? It depends. It depends on the on the weather condition, on the day. It's uh, it's difficult to to well, forecast uh, yes. uh, fishing activity. Ciao. <laughs> Are we going to see fish in the net? Yes, we don't know if we don't fish know is if there's inside. Any fish in there. Oh my god, there's a manta ray! Can you see it? Do they keep they that? They have to leave it free. They have to set it free, of course. And they know that... Uh, that's protected, isn't it? Yes. Oh wow, can they, we watch them do this? How are they going to do that? This is really exciting. They've, um, they've got a manta ray caught in the net, which um, doesn't usually happen. It's right here and it's massive, but they know that's protected and they're going to have to let it go. There! Massive! Wow! Wow! And the blue fish is the bonito, yes. which is now going a bit crazy. So we have the manta ray, a bonito and the sand fish, you said. They lost the bonito. Oh, they're losing all their fish. It's 
trying to um, in trying in, re in releasing the manta ray, which they know is a protected species. They've lost them. Um, wow. Okay, so now Sante. <laughs> Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> Cheese and wine. This is a perfect combination. And this pigato is, uh, I have been converted the best. to the best to the wine. Genoese wine. It's delicious. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, Thank Valentina. You You've spent um, the entire afternoon with us and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you too. Chin chin, sante. Body moving, body moving, body moving. We be body moving, body moving. Body moving, body moving, we be body moving. Join me as I continue to explore Liguria, discovering some hidden gems, as well as visiting the famous Cinque Terre. <laughs>